So I wanted to take a second today to talk about perhaps the biggest elephant in the room, and that is pay to win. A lot of people are afraid, and to this day, I still see several comments talking about how Blizzard's a trash, completely you know focusing on gambling company diablo mortal was garbage and diablo 4 is going to be the exact same and right at the beginning of the video i'll just say these are just complete misrepresentations of what diablo 4 will be now of course it's totally totally fair to be skeptical of blizzard and what they have said due to the nature of kind of being ambiguous during the diablo immortal kind of beta and alpha and ending up being a massive pay to win game however in terms of diablo 4 it really really has been quite explicitly said that the game will not be pay to win but i want to go over exactly what pay to win might mean and some things that might be considered pay to win in some people's eyes but not in the others and some fair criticisms that i would like to make here in this video so before we talk about diablo 4's monetization model i want to define what pay to win means you may have a different definition. It's really not a set definition because depending on who you ask, you might consider this pay to win versus someone else who doesn't. But this is what I say when I'm talking about pay to win. Now, there's two categories here that I'm going to divide it up into that are pay to win and another category here that I would consider pay to experience. Um, and all of them, I would say, are kind of I guess you say not enjoyable gameplay designs. Some are way worse than others and some are pretty reasonable and not really that big of a deal. Starting off with the first one is paying for stats. This is pay to win by, I guess you could say, the most base definition. If you're able to pay for extra damage or extra life in a game, this is going to be far and away the most egregious form of pay to win and the thing that takes away from the game the most. I think a perfect couple of examples to describe pay to win could potentially be games like Black Desert, where you can pay for certain gear upgrades um, by just investing a ton of money, by playing Lost Ark and paying for some enhancements. Again, this may not seem like a lot, but to me, these are all kind of in the same category. And then arguably one of the most, I guess you could say, affluent or egregious versions of pay to win is Diablo Immortal, where it's kind of proliferated through the entire portion of the game. But to me, all of these games kind of have the same idea, which is that you can pay for power in the game. And you could say, oh, well, you have to pay so much more in, you know, Diablo Immortal, or you have to say like, oh, you have to grind so much longer in Diablo Immortal. Who cares? Um, most people are not going to play a game more than two months. And in fact, most of the time, even if I'm trying super hard, people will spend tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars in games like Black Desert and Lost Ark. It doesn't matter to me. They're all kind of the same aspect and they're all bad, okay? And I, this is coming from someone who's played Diablo Immortal a lot. So I think it's bad. <laughs> the second thing is paying for quality of life. This is oftentimes more annoying than paying for stats, but not nearly as gameplay affecting. And when I say annoying, well, it's kind of in the name, quality of life. When I'm playing a game, I don't want to be annoyed by things that make my life harder. Now, paying for quality of life ends up in a little bit of a gray area for most people. But the way I would describe it is, almost like taking away things that are normally in games because it will obviously make the company money and you are almost forced to purchase into it to make your gameplay at least reasonable. Two examples of this are Path of Exile and Undecember. Now, one of them is a tasteful version and the other one is not tasteful version. The game has to fund the development somehow, okay? And that's where Path of Exile comes in where you pretty much only have to buy $40 and you have your stash space and you're totally fine. But then you have games like Undecember where you have to spend $100 to $200 and you need that to kind of at least pick up items and really have options to actually fill up your inventory because your inventory is so small and your stash space is pretty small. Okay. Now, then we get into kind of the, I guess you could say, pay to experience sort of area. And there's I guess you could say two versions of paid of experience. One of them is going to be like DLC content as well as subscription models. This is what I would consider pay to experience, which is that the game doesn't advertise that you can play the whole game and be totally fine and equal to everyone else by playing free to play, right? It's not like, I guess you could say disingenuous. They're saying basically, hey, here's a free to play version. We need to fund our game. Here's a subscription model. Here's a uh, DLC model. 
Obviously, again, as I'll say, it does detract from your experience because you have to spend more money to play the game. And some of these games can get quite expensive. So it's not a good thing for the player, but it's a necessity to keep games running. The second thing, and this is where it gets interesting because this pertains to Diablo 4, is paying for cosmetics. Now, this is something that I think is one of the most popular business models at the current moment. Games like Riot um, and, you know, with Valorant and with uh, League of Legends do this. It's one of the most popular games in the world, and this is how they've stayed so successful. And Diablo 4 is actually following this model to some degree. And this is where I think it gets a little bit interesting because I do think it detracts from the gameplay experience, but it doesn't affect my gameplay. All it does is affect how I feel about getting certain items in the game. And I want to talk about this a little bit more on in specifically Diablo 4. But first, we have to talk about Another thing that I guess you could say some people consider pay to win, but I don't at all. Um, I think it falls under that pay to experience category, and that is early access. So if we look here, we have the standard edition, the digital deluxe edition, and the ultimate edition. And this is where a lot of people's gripes for Diablo 4 start to happen. We can ignore the ultimate edition because all it does is give us extra cosmetics. But I guess if that matters to you, I will address it later on. Digital Deluxe and the Standard Edition is where the big, big controversy happens, which is this up to four days early access with the Digital Deluxe, which is $20 more, you get four days early access, up to four days early access is what it says here. Now, there are two groups of people when we talk about early access. There is the casual player, and then there is the hardcore player. If you're a casual player, this, as I mentioned, due to my definition of pay to win, this is just a pay to experience type thing. You're going to be able to experience the game sooner, and you could just play the game at your own pace, whatever you want. It does not matter to you. However, if you are a more competitive player, there are two things to consider. One is PvP, and the second thing is leaderboards. Without buying the Digital Deluxe Edition, you're probably going to have a pretty rough time competing on the leaderboards. The second thing is if you decide to do PvP, assuming they don't do any sort of um, like stat balancing or anything in PvP, which it looks like they're not going to, then you're going to have a hard time competing in PvP as well. But that's the nature of subscription models, and that's the nature of DLC. If you're going to go play a game, let's say, Guild Wars 2 or World of Warcraft, and you don't have the new DLC, well, you're not going to be able to compete on the leaderboards often because you're not going to have the highest content or the strongest spec or the strongest gear. You're not going to be able to go ahead and compete in PvP as easily. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. Again, it's that pay to experience aspect where you can experience the game sooner. So to me, this falls simply under that subscription model. And it's really no different from the earlier days of World of Warcraft where you had to buy the $60 DLC and then you have to pay $15 a month for subscription. In fact, it's almost um, going to be, including inflation, cheaper than World of Warcraft during those days. Then we consider cosmetics, and I think this is a more interesting conversation, and I'm curious to hear what you all have to say, and this is what prompted me to make this video. A few days ago, this guy, Angry Tacos, asked the crew, the developer crew, they're worried about the addition of paid cosmetics and how this will limit the in-game loot potentially and entice people to buy extra cosmetics through monetary means. Adam Fletcher addressed this with the blog that they posted a while back, and this is something that I read a while back, but I want to go back and read this, uh, not the entire thing, but touch on a few points. In this post, they talk about the battle pass and how it's only going to be um, cosmetics, and both the free version and premium version is going to allow you to level up alts quicker, but the premium version is not going to give you any sort of additional XP. This is very, very crucial because this, again, if the premium version allowed you to level up alts quicker, that would fall under pay to win category, not pay to experience. However, because you're getting cosmetics and typically the cosmetics oftentimes are unique and interesting, this falls under, in my opinion, the pay to experience category. Now, what this does oftentimes, and I personally don't necessarily like it, even though I don't think it's a big deal, you might end up finding yourself trying to grind for, let's say, a really unique piece of armor. And as someone who plays Guild Wars 2, this is really, really a big problem in that game and it takes away some of the enjoyment there. But let's say you're going to go ahead and do a really, really tough dungeon or a really, really tough raid and you beat it. You're one of the first people to beat it. 
but they don't offer any new armor, or even the armor looks worse than the stuff in the shop. It kind of takes away the merit and the fun aspect of grinding for those very difficult pieces of armor or weapons or skins, right? When you could just buy things in the cosmetic shop and just enjoy it for, you know, money, you oftentimes take away the sort of merit that people get from earning these hugely important skins and weapons. And I think this detracts from the overall competitive and gameplay experience. Now, there is the opposite perspective where, well, it's actually a good thing because if you're a casual player, you may not even ever get access to the coolest skins in the game if it were a traditional, you know, experience with no cosmetic shop. But at the end of the day, I think if you well balance it, which Diablo 4 seems to be doing, as you can see here, the best looking cosmetics aren't exclusive to the shop. Diablo 4 will ship with hundreds of transmogs unlockable from drops in game. So it looks to be that they're actually doing a combination of both, which they give you a couple of examples from the shop, like the Wraith Lord Necro, and then they continue to show you, um, this looks like the um, legendary armors from for the rogue, the left is in-game, and the right is the cosmetic shop. The left is the, um, I think this is, I'm not actually quite sure. This might be the necro or the wizard. I think it's the necro, though. Left seems to be in-game, right seems to be in the shop, etc., etc. And to be honest, I think they have done a really good job. For example, for the barbarian, I like the, the cosmetic one that you can buy in the shop far better than the one you get in-game. But for the rogue, for example, I think the in-game armor looks far better than whatever this like druid rogue looking thing is. So it really is a matter of personal preference, but I think that the way Diablo 4 does it mitigates the fact that the cosmetic really removes some of the merit. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. I think this is probably the most interesting conversation to have. I think that people saying, yeah, it's pay to win, it's garbage, the early access is pay to win, is uh, honestly a hard conversation to have because Either you think it or you don't, and I personally view it as a subscription model, but I think that a lot of people can kind of understand the cosmetic complaint, which is that I want to be able to feel like I'm really diving into the game, and I don't want to have like the glowing wings like Diablo 3 has. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all for the next one.